Hello again, it's uh, Paul Beckwith. So I'm continuing my discussions on interactions between very, very strong cyclones, uh, like hurricanes or tropical cyclones and the jet streams and how they can actually add energy to the jet stream or subtract energy from the jet stream, change the waviness, the depth of the meridional movements, uh, the ridges and the troughs in the jet stream, and that can then propagate downstream and uh, affect the weather patterns downstream, you know, so uh, basically, uh, I'm going to show you strong evidence that the um, there were three uh, strong tropical cyclones that hit the South Korean peninsula, and uh, I'm going to show you how they distorted the jet stream and that propagated downstream and created uh, changed the weather from basically being 100 degrees Fahrenheit you know, in places in parts of Colorado to becoming freezing uh, within within a day or two, you know, and then the temperatures went back up to um, very high temperatures again. So I'll show you the connections, uh, how everything's connected via the the jet streams. Now, before I do did, did that, before I do this, um, in the last video, I was talking about I showed you on Earth Null School what's happening in the Atlantic Basin. So here we are. Um, this is September 16th in the Atlantic Basin, and uh, we've got a uh, we've got a basically strong uh, tropical storm slash hurricanes in the whole basin. The water is very warm. In the Pacific, we have one here. We have uh, Sally that just uh, formed down here and quickly came up. Uh, amplified to a category two and just came ashore here, but it's moving very slowly. So it's still affecting a lot of people down in this region. And then you can see all of these other storms here and here and here and here. So there's five in the Atlantic basin. One, two, three, four, five. There's one sort of trying to form down here, a six one. There's one in the Pacific that you can see. You can also see uh, what we call a metacane, a hurricane in the Mediterranean that's, uh, you know, building building strength as, as we speak. Uh, if you look at, um, so this is looking at air at the sur wind at the surface, okay? If you look at the mean uh, sea level pressure, okay, here, uh, this is the same, on the same date, same time, you can see all of these low pressure areas here. You can, they actually stick out, stand out a bit more. You can see slight low pressure here, slight low pressure here. You know, you can see all the ones that we show, I showed you with looking at surface winds, but you can see additional ones. Okay, and then there's the one in the Mediterranean. So this is a very sensitive way of picking out these low pressure areas to see what's forming and where it's going. Um, you know, try these things yourself in, in uh, just Google Earth Null School. And then, it, then we have the jet streams. So if you go back here, I mean, there's a low pressure here. This is a very strong hurricane. And you can see how it's distorted the jet stream, uh, the winds at 250. But the jet stream is nowhere near. It's well north of, the, of this region here. And this is why um, Sally has not been moving that quickly. So you can scroll back and forth here. But as these are moving, they're, in, they're, they're impacting the jet stream, but because there's so many of them, it's hard to really tease out what's happening. So let's go to the, uh, so first of all, what happened? In 48 hours, Colorado went, set records for both heat and snow. So this is one day, all the smoke from the fires, the very next day, snow. And snow, it cleared out the air a bit. You know, it's like a roller coaster. I mean, it was 99 degrees, 100 degrees on Saturday. And then it went to uh, freezing temperatures and snow the very next day. So record heat and then a winter storm watch. This is Sunday, September 6th, you know, record heat possible. And then September 7th and 8th, winter storm watch. And, you know, why did that happen? Okay, well, the jet streams is why. Okay, this abrupt change in temperature will have, you know, you think it affects people. Yeah, well, how it will have a significant impact on outdoor animals. 
as well. I mean, they, they basically, you know, these rapid, this is weather wilding or weather weirding or weather whiplashing, call it what you want. So Denver residents experience winter weather within days of record uh, heat temperature, record heat. Okay, so just incredible departure from normal. Okay, so, uh, you know, look, this is just on Twitter. And uh, this is probably the most incredible temperature change, which I've seen in the forecast. So here we go. Saturday, 36 Celsius. Sunday, 37. Monday, 36. And then Tuesday and Wednesday, 2 degrees Celsius with snow. Okay, uh, just an incredible extreme swing. Okay, so here's... Uh, there's, there was a three sigma, so very unusual, very rare Western US ridge, and that was replaced by a minus four sigma, sigma trough. So the jet stream shifted. The region that was under a ridge and very, very warm suddenly became under a trough um, and became very, very cold. That's the gist of it. Okay, this is the trough here, a close up of the trough, but I'll show you the progression. So here's, uh, first of all, these are the storms. Um, so we had Bavi um, coming up and the, the, um, the, blue, the, the, um, the blue is the precipitation rate, the three hour average, and the green is the cumulative precipitation. And there's the second one. So within two weeks, we had three of them coming up here. So you can see a definite impact on the jet stream from MASAC, and then this is a larger one. It was a major storm here, category, you know, three higher is the red, but then it hit the cooler water. I remember the, the sea surface temperature where the water's warmer down here, you know, and as you get up here, it cools down. So I'll just let this play again. So this is Bavi. Again, the green is accumulation of rainfall. Um, this is two feet here is the darkest green, and this is precipitation rate um, per hour. So this is like an inch an hour at the maximum or 25 millimeters per hour. So you can see the first one come up. There's, and then there's the second one here. Okay, so these guys, these earlier ones will cool the water also along the route that they're going. So when this one comes, you know, into that region, it weakens uh, more quickly than it would have, you know, if these two didn't come prior to it. So here we are, this one clipped Japan and came up right, uh, you know, so they, they came all, uh, you know, affected the South Korea, um, the Korean Peninsula and Japan. Okay, so that's um, what we saw. Now, what happened is the typhoon Entered, entered the Typhoon Mesak, entered the mid-latitudes here, and then Haitian entered, and then the waves propagated downstream, you know, uh, up to higher and higher longitudes, and then the cold front here hit Denver, okay? And this is what the jet streams look like here. So I'll show you uh, some other things, okay? So here's the storms coming up past Japan, the lows, the jet stream, the ridge became higher, farther north, the trough became deeper, and it propagated through. Okay, so this is the, this is uh, the model from September 3rd, and this is the date. So what you can see is the ridge built up here and a trough built up here, and it caused the record swing in temperature in the U.S. Okay, so it was triggered it was directly, the jet stream was directly modified by these um, strong storms in, you know, the, in, in the Pacific, hitting Japan and South Korea, and that distorted the jet stream, which carried across to North America, causing a strong trough and uh, causing the, um, the, the uh, snow. Okay, here's the irony. This potential snow in Denver may be partially the result of a super typhoon strengthened from global warming, whipping the jet stream downstream and pulling this cold air into Colorado. Climate deniers will say, look, what global warming, right? It's totally, totally insane. This is a really good explanation here. So, 
Okay, so here you get the storm coming up. The jet adds energy. It amplifies the uh, jet stream. Okay, this is Haitian here. It caused an amplified trough here, an amplified ridge here, and a trough over North America. Okay, you can talk about this uh, jet stream going in kind of like a waveguide situation and the characteristics of the propagating wave of the Rosby waves of the, uh, you know, the troughs and the, uh, the the ridges and the troughs in the jet stream propagating downstream affecting the weather over North America. Okay, this is the best, uh, so amplified trough here, amplified ridge here, early season trough here, all directly as a result, you can see the tropical cyclones come in, become extra tropical storms, give energy to the jet stream or remove energy depending on where they hit the jet stream and distorting it and then changing the weather thousands of miles uh, downstream. Okay, talk about the connections. Okay, there's a little bit more information here. I went to this uh, tweet. So let's talk about how West Pacific typhoons May 2nd Haitian impact the downstream waveguide, potentially leading to an early season trough over the Great Plains. So the, the extra tropical uh, energy was dynamic. It produced a greater than 170 knot uh, jet and a downstream response. Okay, so 170 knot jet, which is a five sigma, very, very unusual. Uh, five sigma, this is the statistical deviation, right? Very, very rare and unusual event, and it propagated down and uh, caused the uh, trough to develop over North America. Okay, um, you know, and depending on where it hits the jet stream, it can actually de-amplify the wave or amplify the wave. So it can change, it can make it wavier or less wavy. Okay, and two different storms hitting in different locations can have uh, exact opposite responses depending on where it hits. And, you know, this the models were actually pretty good in predicting this. So this was the, um, there were two models. There's the, the European model and the U.S. model. This is the European model, said the ridge would be like this, and this is the U.S. model, saying this would come straight down instead of back sloping. But both of them predicted the the cold spell here, um, and this one here I think is closer to the truth in this case, the, the ECMWF, anticyclonic, um, um, uh, you know, cutting low off over the Rockies and the GFS uh, progressive. So one of them, you know, it's backtracking here. This is coming straight down, basically. So the models pretty much hit it. Now, um, this is Earth Null School for this region. And this is the, I started September, October 21st. This is air at the surface, winds at the surface. And you can go through here and you can see the progression over here is where we'll be focusing on. Okay, so storm number two coming up here. Storm number three coming up here. Okay. And if we go to uh, look at the uh, um, mean sea level pressure starting on the 21st of August, the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th. Okay, you can clearly see the um, the storms coming up here, the low pressure storms coming up and hitting, and there's the next one here. Okay, and you can try to look for the features that I showed you over here in the in the jet stream. So, um, you know, you can cycle through, and over here in North America. Okay, so the jet stream, you know, there's a lot of fluctuation. It's harder to see, but you can see September 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th. Here you go. You can see the strong cutoff, the strong low here, causing the extreme cold uh, in, in uh, near Denver. 
Anyway, thank you for listening. Huge interactions between storms and the jet stream and vice versa.